So this is lesson 3.3 .3 in elementary algebra, graphing linear equations in two variables. So what we're going to do here is we're going to give you an equation and you're going to graph it. So one of the key things in this one, this particular one that's already taken care of, we've already got it with it equal to a variable, in this case equal to y. And that's what we want to do. We want to make it y equals something. So it's already in that form. And we make our table. And you put an x and a y. And you choose three numbers. It doesn't matter what they are. And you put them in there for x. So I, again, I usually like to pick um, a number that's positive, 0, and then maybe a negative. So if I pick 3, and I put a 3 in here for x, I get 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 is 8. So when x is 3, y is 8. When I put 0 in here, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. When I put a negative 3 in for x, I get 3 times negative 3 minus 1, so I get negative 9 minus 1, or plus negative, so I get negative 10. So negative 10 goes down there. And once I do that, then I do my graphing. So let me put a graph on here real quick. And I graph those points. So I go over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's one point. I graph 0, negative 1. So I don't go left or right any because it's 0. But I go down, negative 1. Then I go over 1, 2, 3, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then when I draw this line, I better get a straight line that goes through all three points. And I do. So I'm done. That's how you um, graph those. So let's try a couple more. So let's see. Exercise 3 gives me y equals negative one third x plus two and again I draw my handy dandy little graph here I put whatever numbers I want now uh, I'm going to put zero in here because then I have negative one third times zero plus two and those I get zero so the only thing left is my two y equals zero plus two or y equals two alright but I gotta pick a few more and whatever numbers I pick one of the problems is, when I multiply it by one-third, I'm going to end up getting a fraction. Unless I, I use for my x value a number that is a multiple of 3. So, for example, if I decide to put, let me get a different color here, I decide to put 6 in there, I get negative one-third times 6 plus 2. Now I get 1 third times 6, which is 6 over 3. 6 over 3 is 2. And that gives me 0. So see, I didn't have to deal with any fractions. All the fractions pretty much went away. And let's say I pick another one. Multiple of 3. The, a multiple of the denominator. So let's use 9. So I get negative 9 over 3 plus 2. Negative 9 over 3 is negative 3 plus 2. Signs are different. Take the difference between the two, but the sign of the largest one on there. So when x is 9, y is negative 1. Now if I would not have picked a multiple of the denominator, I would have gotten, let's say I picked 2. So I get negative 2 thirds plus 2. Now I have to find common denominator, 6 over 3, and get negative 8 over 3, and kind of guess that that's negative 2 and 2 thirds. Try graphing negative 2 and 2 thirds. It's not fun. So that's why we multiply by, the mul by a multiple of the denominator, no, what, no matter what it was. If it were a 5, we would multiply it by... 5 or a 10 or a 15. So any multiple of the denominator gives you a lot easier graph here. So then when I graph this, I go 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, and 9, negative 1. And when I draw my line, it goes through 
all three of those points. All right, so let's look at one like example. Well, let's look at example number four and uh, see what that looks like because that gives us 3x minus 2y equals 6. So I have to first of all solve this for y before I can make my table and graph it. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides and I get negative 2y because these go away. Then I divide by negative 2. So I get y equals negative 6 over 2 minus 3 over 2. Oops, negative. In fact, just for what we're doing here, let's make our negative down here and that negative and then an x. Two negatives give me a positive. 6 over 2 is 3, so it's negative 3 because of this negative sign plus 3 halves x. And we're going to write it in the right order. You always put your x's first. So let's put the 3 halves x in the front minus 3. Make sure you carry the sign with you. All right, now at this point I can start by uh, putting in my, making my table with my x's and my y's. So let's move this out of the way except our final formula. Let's move this over here. And we've got an x and a y. And we'll put 0 in there. So we get 3 halves times 0 minus 3. That gives me 0 minus 3, so that's a minus 3. All right, I still have a fraction, so I'm going to do multiples of my denominator, in this case 2. So I'm going to put a 4 in there for x. And that gives me 12 over 2 minus 3. 12 over 2 is 6 minus 3, and that equals 3, so that's my y. And let's try a negative number, so let's do negative 4. So 3 halves times negative 4 minus 3, negative 12 halves minus 3, negative 6 minus 3, or plus negative 3. So that gives me, you add the two together and put the sign on there, it gives me negative 9. So when I put negative 4 in, I get negative 9 there. All right, so that gave me three points. Now I can go ahead and uh, graph this. So I'm going to graph 0, negative 3, 4, 3, and negative 4, negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Got to, to get that line that goes through all three of those points, and I'm done. So before we end this lesson, I want to go over a couple other things that could happen. Sometimes they give you an equation that looks like this. x equals 3, and there's no y value. That means y can be absolutely anything. So I just find 3 on my x-axis. So here's my x-axis. So I just go over 1, 2, 3, and I put a dot there. And if I say y can be anything, but x is always going to be 3, it doesn't matter where I'm at, I can go over 3 and hit a point on the, the equation there. So all of these points work because x is 3. And then I just draw a line straight down to show that x can be any, or y can be any number along that line. So whenever you have something like x equals 3 or x equals anything, you go to that number and you draw a vertical line. That's it. All right, on the other hand, when you have the y value, but you don't have an x value, so if I have y equals 3, then I go to wherever y equals 3 is, up 3, up 3, up 3. And it doesn't give me an x, so that means I just draw a line all the way across here to show that y is equal to 3, no matter what the x value is. If that were x is negative 3, I'd have a, or y equals negative 3, I'd have a horizontal line at y is negative 3. So if you're just given the y and a number, you get a horizontal line at that number. If 
you're just given an x in that number, it's a vertical line at that number. So x equals negative 4 would be this line right there. Because we are negative 4 over, and you draw a vertical line. And that's it for Lesson 3.3.